board until it goes green dot. We have a green dot. I think I did it myself this time. And Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brief moment of silence and prayer. And for the roll call, I have uh, Robertson, Giovanelli, Verville, Scott, Spillane, Von Hassel, Carbone, Langlois, and Cody. Unexcused are Hopkins and Levesque. We'll go to citizens' comments. Seeing no citizens. <laughs> not to say you're not citizens, but you're in a, an official capacity, so. <clears throat> We'll move on to approval of outstanding minutes. Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. I'll move the minutes of uh, Tuesday, November 29th, 2016 as written. Second. Minutes of the 29th have been moved and seconded. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> um, did we already do the 22nd minutes? Were those postponed and postponed? I believe that we did October, but not uh, the November 22nd minutes. If you'll give me an indulgence, I'll look to see. I don't think, I, I don't have a copy, so I couldn't, I couldn't move it without a copy. They can move it. <clears throat> I don't have a copy with me. I uh, sent the copies out, but I don't have it with me. I, can I read it today. If you read it and you want to move it, you can do so. Yes, I read that one too. He sent but the 20, 22nd I sent out about a week ago or so. No, you sent it out today too. The 22nd? No, I sent the third out today. That was the Saturday meeting. Oh. Okay. And I sent the 29th we'll out today. The next meeting. All right, I we will table it, and we'll get back to whether we actually already approved the 22nd or not. Uh, I don't believe we did. <clears throat> All right, under old business, um, we had some replies from the school board because we had a request that was on Saturday. Did you guys get an answer to that? So and, we, and you had some other uh, other things as well that you owed us to. We met uh, last <clears> night <throat> uh, to uh, our regular meeting and brought forward some of the questions from the Budget Committee. Um, uh, for I try to take them chronologically here. Uh, in regards to adding a new line to the budget the with $1 for student supplies, uh, the board has decided not to do that. It was discussed last night. Um, surplus info, you have had emailed over to you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I believe you will. Have you distributed that to the board or a subcommittee committee yet? I just yeah, yeah, it is was, distributed. Yeah, that was okay. distributed. All right. Um, <clears throat> we had a question about the quantity and cost of Chromebooks in service. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we have 158 Chromebooks in service purchased over the last three years. Uh, cost of those is between $200 and $259 per unit, and there is a um, activation fee uh, service uh, that ranges between $20 and $30 per unit. Okay. And that information has been emailed to you as well, Mr. Chair. That one will get emailed around. I don't believe I sent that one around. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Verbal. So are there, are, are there any other portable devices that the students have access to, or are we sole platform on Chromebooks? The, the devices the students have access to that are portable are the Chromebooks. There is other types of devices in use in the school, but the portable devices for the students are Chromebooks. Uh, for the exception of the first grade has a small um, uh, common shared uh, collection of tablets. 
Mr. Chairman. Mr. Von Hassel. Um, can I ask a question? You may. Is that activation fee an annual fee or a one-time? It is one-time. One-time. Thanks. Mr. Verville. What's the... Uh, What's the make of the tablets that are being used in the first grade? Uh, I would have to get that information for you. Please. <clears throat> I have a concern in that um, I've never had the situation arise where the Budget Committee has said that we'd like a line added because it will make our budgeting process easier and, and then have that refused by any committee, board, or department. Um, I will have to have us now check with the Municipal Association and see what our legal ability is to require that the school add the line since we asked that it be done. I requested it uh, uh, as the committee <coughs> requested and that was the uh, decision of the board. I will, um, I will contact the Municipal Association and find out because we are an authoritative board and we did request that that line be added to make it easier for us to budget and to have the school board come back and refuse to put that line in um, seems first of all to be uh, kind of belligerent because it, there's no reason you can't just add a line and put a dollar in it when the, the budget committee has asked you to do so and second of all it seems to uh, fly against everything that we've ever done as far as trying to work with the school board and uh, make the budgets easier for this this committee to understand and interpret. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Mr. Verville. There's also a long outstanding request for the uh, <clears throat> send home supply list. I guess are, there is. Are, <clears throat> are we going to get that information or is it the intention of the school board to simply not supply that to this committee? So the administration uh, had provided or had the list available last night for the board. Uh, there was a lot of discussion, obviously, around budgetary matters last night. Um, the administrator uh, expressed to the board uh, uh, reluctance from the staff to provide the lists or the <coughs> letters uh, as they're currently written because they are typically sent in a personal nature. The staff members introducing themselves to the students, and many of those letters contain student names and whatnot. Um, the board discussed that, and, and the board uh, is not going to provide those lists as they currently exist. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Verville. So, I fully appreciate that the school district or administration, I'm just going to roll the administration, the faculty, the staff, the school board as the district fully understand and appreciate that the school district may choose to redact non-germane parts of those documents. But they're electronic documents. And to redact um, is a very quick and efficient process. But what bothers me more is that the request was made long ago and it seems to have finally come up for discussion last night. And so, while I'm certainly not as interested in the, in the line item uh, that Mr. Spillane referred to, but it certainly does seem that the school board is a lot less willing to provide requested information to this committee. And that is very unfortunate. We're all elected to represent the town people of Deerfield. As Mr. Spillane has said, we are an authoritative budget committee, not advisory. And so this is the information that's required for us to be able to make informed decisions. Now, while I appreciate the school district might choose to follow a policy of not tracking independently consumables used by students versus replacement light bulbs for overhead projectors and what other other miscellany bric-a-brac. Personally, I think that's poor accounting practices, especially where a number is asked for and is not arrived at and a list is given that is more representative of the requester 
than the request. That is to say, what the, what the line item has been spent, right? The list that was given, in my opinion, and I didn't state it previously because I, I figured the school board would be more, more forthcoming, but the list is non-responsive. To look at it and say, well, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but to say fourth grade supplies spent X with no denotation of what that is, is non-responsive. And to be quite frank, I think that what we're seeing is a trail of non-responsive. So to end the diatribe, because I certainly didn't mean to go on one, we're going to have the SAU personnel here. And it's unfortunate that we're going to drag this out, that we're going to have to wait for them to come in, make the request to the SAU personnel directly. I'm talking superintendent, financial officer, et cetera to get this information because my guess is that they are not going to be as non-responsive as the school board has chosen to be. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Von Hassel. I would have to agree with Mr. Verville. This appears to be a thumb in the eye. Please speak more into the microphone. Thumb in the eye of the, um, to the NBC. And it then kind of cascades to the fact that we're going to have to take a pretty conservative approach when we look at these numbers. I think it's in the SAU's best interest to be forthcoming with the information. I think that taxpayers in Deerfield deserve to know what's in these line items, not just the NBC. Thank you, Mr. Von Hassel, and I, I will um, follow on what Mr. Verbal said in that uh, I think that the SAU is far more uh, in tune with what legally they must provide when we request information, and I don't feel that they will have any problem, but it will delay our process because if we come to them and say we want this information, they know that they have a legal obligation because we are a, a, uh, a, an authoritative board that was put in place by the voters of this town and when we put a budget forward it is our budget it is no longer the school board's budget it is no longer the town's budget and when we request information to have a school board say they're not going to provide it is uh, not an appropriate answer it's not one that this board will stand for and um, legally we will find out what we have to do to move from here to get the information we need and to be able to work with this budget the way that we, we need to. Uh, certainly going into this budgeting season, I never expected these kind of uh, stonewalling tactics and, and refusal to cooperate. We've never had that in the past. This is the first time that we've come to the school and said, we'd like this additional information and the school board's been reluctant to provide it. Um, does anybody else have anything to add to this? Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Giovanelli. <clears throat> I got to say that given the school board's excuse for or, or what they see as a problem, would only be a problem if the teachers were writing individual lists and notes to each student that Point were taken. different and unique. Otherwise, it's a merge of a Word document or yeah, and if it's the same list in every note, it's just a matter of redacting on one and making a copy or a scan. It's, it's really a straw dog argument. And it's not unreasonable information to have asked for. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. I'm not a lawyer. But I will bet that if I file a request under right to know, to get those documents because they were public documents that went home under right to know I can get that information. The question is why would we need to resort to that? Mr. Scott. Uh, may I address Mr. Langma? You may. Uh, Mr. Langwa, I know you gave the reason of that there's student information on those documents as a reason uh, not to um, provide them to us. Uh, however, I, have, I do have another question. Was that the only reason given by the school board, or were there any other reasons provided that you're aware of? That was the concern um, given to us by the administration, and the school board uh, directed 
uh, the administration not to provide the list. So as, did, or the letters uh, as they currently exist. So as a parent as well, I did receive these letters and I can verify that there were no personal information on those letters. They were written um, as a general to all the students. They may have differed from class to class and teacher to teacher. Um, there may have been my daughter's first name on it. But that's all public information anyway. So the, the irony of the situation in my eyes is that they sent these letters to the public, yet somehow they don't think that they're public. I understand the frustration of the committee. Unfortunately, tonight I am the messenger. I understand that. Um, and I am Understood. And this is not an attack on you. It is an attack on the it is not policies attack, taken no. by... I am relaying the information provided by the board. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. And, and it's, I, I won't waste a lot of time on this because it's probably not germane to this committee, but it, if I understand what's being relayed to us, the administration, to, to Mr. Scott's point, has sent home documents with students' names on it to 20, 30 other parents. So I'm not sure, to Mr. Scott's point, how a student's name can be publicly disseminated amongst random parents, because they're random other than they were placed in the same class, which is not exactly random, but for, the, for statistical purposes, one could consider it so, and yet that information cannot be released a second time is uh, a bit beyond the pale. I think we've all gone over the fact that the argument itself doesn't hold water. Redacting is something that's commonly done um, the letters are public domain, they're public information, they were distributed publicly, and uh, beyond that, any request from this board is, is a legal request, not just a polite request, and if we have to get more uh, teeth behind our request, we will. Uh, so we have two issues now outstanding that uh, I will have to be contacting the Municipal Association's attorney to discuss our further actions on. Any more discussion on this? Seeing none, we'll go to replies from the Select Board. Mr. Robertson. Um, yeah, and as I arrived here this evening, I realized that I did not bring the, um, the specs on the police cruiser that were asked for. I know the chief does have those. He told me I could come pick them up or that Jan could. I think probably in the interest of time, I will get them, scan them, and send them to Chairman Spillane, and you can disseminate them to people. Um, we do have the, the packet, uh, both for the, the one that's coming from last year's budget and what's proposed for next year's budget with all the specifics. Um, with regard to the warrant article um, that uh, specifically enables us to sell property, uh, there was mention of the Parks and Rec Commission, the Conservation Commission, and the Planning Board also reviewing, and that is in an advisory capacity, uh, in, unless it's uh, conservation-specific land, like under conservation easement, that sort of thing, the Conservation Commission would have no uh, no authoritative uh, voice in the sale of those. The Board of Selectmen or the town meeting are the only uh, entities that can either hold up or accept or sell. Um. So to clarify, if a piece of parcel came under town's control or ownership and it had an easement already on it, then the Conservation Commission would have a way to voice some more authoritative way Possibly, but possibly for but the for the most part, this is just a first right of refusal uh, that we put in there. It made sense to us to have mm -hmm. the planning board, the conservation commission, and parks and rec look at any parcels of property that that we were considering selling. Uh, you know, if it would be in the best interest of the town to use it for expansion of the school or expansion of a ball field or something like that, we would hate to have the select board just act to auction it and not give those boards a chance to voice some opinion. Understood. Thank you very much for that information. Was there, uh, there was a third item that we had asked you to look into for the uh, ability for the Municipal Budget Committee to uh, weigh in on Warren articles that had no monetary value but were directly impacting tax and or uh, yes, budget. Yes, I haven't gotten a response back, and actually I haven't talked to Jan for a day or two, so that's, and she wasn't there today, so I will get that in. Uh, if it's okay with you in the interest of time, again, I can electronically send that to you. 
perfectly fine. We'll distribute it and then uh, be able to talk about it at the next meeting. Okay. And we've, we've made no changes or reaction uh, as of yet to the budget after Saturday's meeting. Um, we have plenty of other things to hold our interest. And <laughs> we'll get back to the budget. But. Okay. Thank you very much. Under new budget, uh, new business, um, the there's no updates to the town budget or warrant articles, as we just covered already. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Verville. Uh, if I may, um, we actually got a new packet, and I did um, have an opportunity to review it, and I'd, I'd like to speak to it, if I may. You may. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> I largely focused my attention on page 63 for those that uh, may or may not uh, care to follow along. Um, the one thing uh, that jumped off the page was the um, year-on-year -year percent increase, um, my number did not reconcile with that of column eight, um, and I had assumed that I would made a, a clerical error, and I double-checked my math. So the 5.9 percent increase that's reflected in that line uh, is actually uh, comparing the select board's recommended budget to the 20, uh, 2017 select board recommended budget to the 2016 um, budget that passed by the voters. So if we compare um, the current 2017 municipal budget committee budget bottom line to the 2016 budget, it represents a 4.3 percent increase. Okay, so just so that we, we know that. Okay. Um, the, the MBC budget, proposed budget for 2017 uh, is 0.7% uh, less than the original select board uh, budget. I didn't have a lot of time to go through it. I did notice that the select board budget for 2017 uh, did seem to, uh, no, I'm sorry, I was looking at a bad page. So it's a, it's a 7%, 0.7% um, reduction. Um, the, the NBC 2017 budget represents a 17.5% increase over the actual town spend of 2015. So from 2015 to what we're proposing now is 17.5% in two years, um, although it, it's only 4.5% over the 2015 uh, approved budget. So uh, I am still uh, very concerned with the 4.3% the increase um, year on year. So I will just mention that for food for thought for other members uh, because we can come back at it again. Uh, and then, uh, other than that, I just have a quick question for the select board member, if I may. You may, Mr. Verville. Uh, Mr. Robertson, has there been any discussion or consideration by the select board for, well, let me, let me give some background. So, I inquired with the highway agent relative to our um, ongoing maintenance of roads, whether he felt we were slipping backwards, um, keeping pace, or, or moving forward. Um, and his indication was that he felt we were, we were basically keeping pace. Um, with all due respect to the highway agent, I, I don't agree with that analysis. And it's, it's my opinion, uh, as qualitative as it is, um, that we are slipping behind. And unfortunately, uh, in the past, uh, you know, those types of um, road improvement warrant articles have passed. Uh, but again, I mean, failed. And, and again, every one that has failed uh, listed a, a certain segment of road. Uh, and I, I don't remember if it was myself or perhaps it was you, Mr. Robertson, at the Saturday meeting, sort of threw out the idea of potentially starting. Um, a trust fund, uh, much like the winter highway maintenance for um, road maintenance and or reconstruction. I'm wondering if the select board has given any more thought to that and if we may anticipate such a warrant article. At this point, we have not. Um, and typically, the select board re relies very heavily on the highway agent's recommendations um, as much because a highway agent is essentially equal to uh, the selectmen in terms of uh, how they can manage the highways. We can try to hold the purse strings um, if we feel they're acting inappropriately, but that's really our only authority over the highway agent. Um, and at this point, we have not discussed the trust fund similar to that. It's something that I can certainly bring to the board. Um, I, I, I would appreciate that. I, I think it, it may be... Um a good way to potentially make some um, 
additional strides forward on the, the care and maintenance of our road. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may continue. Mr. Verbal, you may. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Robertson, when do you think you'd be able, to, what meeting of the NBC do you think you might be able to come back with uh, a feeling for the, the view of the board? Um, I would think possibly at the next meeting. So that, and that would be next Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're meeting on Monday. Okay, perfect. Um, so with that, I, 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 will, I will await the response from the, um, from the select board. Um, if the select board chooses not to move forward with, with that type of concept, um, then I may make a, a request to ask the highway agent to come back again if there's no objection uh, from the committee, more for Q&A background information than anything else. Um, but I'll postpone that discussion, obviously, till next Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion on uh, any updates in your packet that you had gotten? Okay, seeing none, we'll go on to, um, well, is there any new, any new discussion on warrant articles from the town? Do we have any updates Chairman, or anything? Uh, yeah. We've done nothing to the warrant articles that you saw on Saturday okay. at this point. Then uh, we've received the budget from the school. No? Yes? On its way. Okay. <laughs> so is this, is this what we've done already? Yeah, that's, that's updated with all of our changes and things. So I, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, if I may, you may. Uh, this budget is still currently a working document. Uh, obviously, it is in a draft form. We have a few more meetings uh, upcoming here to, to make some final tweaks. Uh, in our meeting last night, there were some, some changes that were made uh, from the budget that you have currently in front of you. Um, I can discuss those a little bit uh, if it's the wish of the board. Um, and I can answer any questions. Absolutely. Um, and my one of my biggest questions would be the fact that there's no backup in here at all. Uh, and in previous years, we've relied heavily on uh, quite a lot of backup, including classroom sizes, classroom projected distributions, um, uh, current high school enrollment, high school tuition projections. Those uh, are... Uh, in regards to high school enrollment and projections, those are in the line 20 through 27. Section. I see that in there, but we don't have the backup that usually gives us some colored charts showing uh, where the teachers are, are aligned and where the students are aligned. If it refreshes you, you can go back and look at what we got last year for a packet. But um, Mr. Sherman? Mr. Verville? Yeah, certainly. Um, this is certainly atypical of um, what we've received historically. Um, and is in fact very thin and I would uh, formally request and and I'll make a motion if it's if it I'm gonna move make I a motion move based that on our current I'm gonna make a motion that the um, the school board representative uh, go back and look at previous years packets and request demand that the school board submit to us a budget with backup information that conforms to the historical standard that this committee has received. I've been on this committee for, I don't know, five or six years, and every year the budget uh, presentation has been similar with a lot of backup information. And I would request that we go back to that historical standard, please. And I would look for a second. Second. That's been moved and seconded, and uh, I will go ahead and discuss onto that too. That uh, um, I'm shocked that this is what we've gotten because this is nowhere near what we've ever had to work with before, um, and and it's weak. It's not, Mr. Chair. It's not at all as as in depth as it needs to be, Mr. Langlois. If I may, please understand that this is a very early draft of the budget. This is allowing the committee to see in through the windows we're working through our budget process. The information you're looking for is coming, um, but this is to give the budget committee something to see so that they can start potentially posing questions so that we can start working through all that for you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. So again, we always hear in the commercial that past uh, 
past performance is not indicative of, of, of future earnings. Many of the documents that we receive with this budget are in existence. I know they're in existence because they were distributed and discussed at school board meetings. Historically, when, and I'm talking every year I've been on this committee, and there are some members that have been on this committee longer than I, that when the school board agrees to deliver the budget, it is a budget in total. And while much like the select board, where they deliver us a budget and backup in totem, and then perhaps make changes after it's delivered to this committee to recommend to this committee, because once they turn it over, we don't, we're not required to adopt those changes. So I'll give an example. How do I know if I have questions on personnel levels without seeing how many teachers in what grade with how many kids? How am I supposed to even know? So there's my question. How am I supposed to know if this number is reasonable? This is, this is a spreadsheet of numbers with virtually zero supporting documentation. I'll add to that in the fact that, uh, I mean, typically we are able to see complete staffing lists, salaries. Um, years of service. Their years of service, their steps. All of that information that is that you use to create the budget. So I know you had to look at it somewhere to get the budget where it's at. You had to have your classroom projections and all of that stuff that we were not delivered. And in prior years, We've always gotten it. Now, I've been on this budget a lot long, uh, committee a lot longer than Mr. Verville, and it took us a lot of years to, to fine tune the types of backup we knew we needed to work efficiently as a committee. So there would be years we'd ask for a little more here, a little more there, something a little different format. We finally got that down the last two or three years. It's been quite easy to go through the backup information and find most of what we need. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. And if I may. The calendar that we have followed this year for receiving town budgets and expecting to receive the school budget has been consistent for my entire tenure on this committee. And in fact, Tuesday's meeting, which we were supposed to get the budget, was pushed to tonight, which actually gave the school board an extra meeting to make final decisions before delivering it to the MBC. With that said, I would like to amend my own motion to say that not only do we expect and demand the backup material that we historically we have always received, but that we will receive that information at our next meeting, Tuesday, the 13th of December, 2017. And I would look for a second for the amendment. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Chair. Mr. Giovanelli. Well, I was anticipating you're going to begin discussion. We are open for discussion at this time. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point something out here that's a bit, in my mind, problematic. Does it have to do with the two, with the motion and amended motion, or is yes. it more the to do with the budget the itself? It doesn't have to do with the amendment. Let's do the amendment and come back to the question. Right. First, we have to okay. deal with disposing okay. of the amendment that's that's on the floor. Okay. So, if it has Understood. to do with the amendment, we'll bring that discussion in. If not, then we'll come back to that discussion after we dispose of the amendment. I'm not sure if it does because my question is about the default lines and getting similar support that we're discussing with the rest of it. So I'm not sure if it's kind of a build on. I'll accept. We're voting on when we're have the, the, the amendment is to add the date in. Okay. Let's deal with the date first. Okay. Mr. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, just if I could direct a question to the school board member. You may. Um, Zach, do you anticipate that the customary backup information that comes with the budget is coming because I know I've been on the budget committee for a long time and some years we've gone till Christmas before we've gotten the final school budget to look at um, if I mean is this something that you're planning on showing up with next week anyway or? it is it is and again it is a, a very this is very much a very early draft for the budget committee's review Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott um, I'd just like to, may I address uh, Mr. Verville? 
You may. Is it to do with the dead deadline? It dates? does. It uh, Mr. Vogel, I'd like you to uh, suggest that you amend your comments to 2016. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, let the record reflect uh, 2016, obviously. Thank you, Mr. Scott. It's just, you know, this isn't they can't work on it. Okay. Uh, so you corrected your date. To six, yeah, 2016. 2016. 13 December 2016. All right. We've had that clarification. Is this, if there's no further discussion on the request to have that information available next Tuesday, then we'll go ahead and vote on that now. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? To abstain. Um, okay. Now we're back on the original motion, which was to provide the information with full backup. Not the date that we provide it, but the actual. And I'll let Mr. Giovanelli address the backup he's looking for. I'd like to see backup as to the criteria for the default budget. The reason I'm making this request is because, in theory, the default budget is supposed to be I guess, for lack of a better phrase, somewhat painful compared to the budget you request. And what I'm noticing here is that a variance of $65,000 represents half a percent of the bottom line budget that the school board is proposing. So does the school board really care if the town passes this budget or not? And why is that gap so narrow? That seems That seems a bit odd to me. So I'd like to look at the construction of the default budget and validate that it is indeed the way the default budget should be and that there's not some error that would lead to such a, a narrow gap between the two. We typically do get a chance to look at the default budget. Uh, typically that comes a little later. Um, with the school, they tend to be able to provide them fairly close to each other because they come so much later in the cycle. With the town, we tend to get the default budget. Was it usually January, I think, end of December to January? I'm, I'm talking about what's on the last page here. Yes. They must have support for these numbers. I'm they sure did that they did not go to lottery and borrow, borrow the whirling ball machine to make these up. So the support that goes with these numbers and the criteria thereof is, is exactly what I'm looking for with this because it seems it, it is seems very, too easy. It, it seems like a very uh, reasonable request to have included in the backup that we will be receiving from them. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. I'll move the question. All right. A question for delivering full budget with backup so that we have a budget that we are used to working with without any holes and gaps that will delay our ability to look at this budget and adequately decide if it's been spent properly has been moved all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed abstain seven to zero to two yep Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott, I'm just taking notes for the uh, minutes here. Uh, may I address Mr. Langwa? Am I saying your name right? Close enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. You may. Mr. Lang, Mr. Lang, Lang, Langwa? Langlois. Langlois? Yes. Mr. Langlois, I'm sorry. Oh, I've always said it wrong myself. <laughs> it's fine. I've been called worse. <laughs> it's the French. I took three years of it, so I. In, as I'm a new member on the board, I have not seen previous year's backups, but there is one thing in uh, particular that I um, w I just want to ask if it's usually in the backup, and that is, um, do you usually, does the school board usually provide uh, all bids of purchase, um, all three bid scenarios, multiple bid scenarios, RFPs, any of those types of backup? I, I will speak to state that historically the school board um, has not had a uh, formal purchasing policy until uh, recently. 
um, I can request that the bids that were uh, published, uh, that the summary pages be included in the backup. That would be, that would be great. And and to add to that, Mr. Scott, from my memory, um, there have been occasions when large purchases needed to be made for the school and or large repairs, and discussion usually would involve. Um, how many times did it go out to bid? What were the different bids like? Why did we make the decision we made? But I don't believe that a standard packet was ever delivered with every single bid that was taken or large purchase. It tended to be just about uh, specific large purposes that popped up um, when they needed to fix a boiler, replace a boiler, put in the alarm system, that type of deal. deal. Mr. Von Hassel. Uh, can I address Mr. Wayne? Lewis? You may. Um, question, Zach. I noticed in construction bid summary that a lot of the larger bids seem to go through the SAU, and the SAU only publishes one bidder. We never get to see what the other bidders are or how many people bid this mm -hmm. on this project. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I personally, I'd like to see that information provided. I believe that detail will be in the summary. Okay. Pages, um, which one is of, yeah. what is provided to the board. One of them stands out was the telephone system, I believe, that was bid. Yes. Uh, during the year. That, and, it, that, it, and that particular one received an um, extraordinary number of responses. Um, yeah. And uh, we were very fortunate that uh, what we expected uh, from a budgetary standpoint to be a very large cost uh, worked out to be. Um, we were anticipating somewhere in the vicinity of a sixty to ninety thousand dollar cost based upon what we were getting from budgetary information, and uh, we were able to do that for uh, approximately a third of what we had budgeted. Yep. So, pretty but good. I can, it's, it's just concerning that they don't publish the three bidders I can, so that you can compare. I can have the the summary sheets can all be pulled easily. Um, no, I have those. them. It's just a, I, I need to pull that data. Right. There was another bid that went out, that came out too, and I looked at it and. Um, the yeah. bid results, and I forget what it was. The ones that so. the SAU office is our bidding um, office. Uh, the business administrator is the purchasing agent for the district. Right. Um, so bids will always be um, uh, handled and processed through the SAU office in Pembroke. Uh, that being said, um, uh, large items uh, that went out to bid this year uh, would have been the phone system, uh, the stairs. <laughs> up to the behind the building up to the ball field um, and uh, transportation are the three in landscape services and plowing would be the five that come to mind I think it was the stairs that I remembered the, the back stairs I, and I believe we only had one response um, uh, right. on that bid um, it, I just you know from an informational standpoint it would be great I know we'll get it in this packet absolutely coming. But I know that traditionally the SAU only publishes the low bidder, mm -hmm. and there's really no way to reference whether they really were the low bidder. Or not, not. not necessarily the low. We don't always go with the well, lowest. The lowest the, responsive the, the best bidder. The, best the lowest low. responsive low bidder, bidder right. is, is uh, I, I can say that um, my recollection is that every uh, bid that has been selected has been the low bid thus far. But I can't guarantee that would always be the case. Any other uh, questions or discussions before we move on? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. If I might address the school board member. <laughs> you may. Mr. Langloss, when do you anticipate that the superintendent, financial officer, and administrative staff from DCS to begin joining this committee as we work through this budget? Uh, that is a, a question I would actually defer back to the chairman as to when you would like to start processing through that with uh, those members of our staff. And I can request them to be available um, at Mr. your discretion. Mr. Chairman. Well, I would take a feeling from the board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. Sadly, we have precious little information to work with between now and next Tuesday. But certainly, now that we've lost a week and a half, we would certainly expect to start seeing those people at the 20 December 2016 meeting to begin getting those answers. The, our cycle is getting into the short strokes. And there, historically, 
have been a lot of questions from a lot of members that requires time for the SAU and the administrative staff to pull together. And so now that we've lost this time, uh, certainly on the 20th, um, I would not be opposed to having them come during our next meeting, but I, I couldn't guarantee that there would be value to it. I, I would agree that the next meeting we may not have enough questions to make it worthwhile. The 20th is actually getting kind of late into our cycle. Mr. Chairman, uh, please. Mr. Giovanelli. Maybe the material could be presented in such a fashion that we could be able to discuss it as it was presented and, and maybe begin a little bit earlier. So maybe it, it might be Mr. valuable to the extent that they can provide us an informative presentation and engage in discussion accordingly. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Verville. Um, actually, uh, Mr. Giovanelli took the words right out of my mouth. So one of the, at least one of the documents that historically members have always struggled with is number of teachers per grade and recommended class sizes. So based on that alone, and perhaps other questions that, that committee members will come up with between now and next Tuesday, I think it would be well worthwhile to get the superintendent, the financial officer, uh, and the school administration here for our meeting on the 13th. Because class size and number of teachers is, is always a big topic. So with special ed, do you think that we'd probably not touch on that until 20th? Without seeing any backup, it's hard to say. Anybody else on the committee have any opinions? Mr. Mr. Robertson. Yeah, just given some of the questions uh, with regard to IT, that might be something you could tackle too. There, there seems to be an interest in portable devices, what brand names, that sort of thing are. That and, is true. And Deb can certainly, I know she's generally happy to present an mm -hmm. AV type proposal on exactly what's going on. Good suggestion, Mr. Robertson. Thank you very much. So the IT person would be great to have here as well. Um, I, Mr. Chairman, if they can make this on, make it on uh, next Tuesday, the 13th, I think that that would be uh, great. I don't think we need to do anything formal uh, about it. But Mr. Vervil, uh, yeah, I, I I would I would encourage the full cadre of players attend. Um, you know, certainly next Tuesday, um, we will have at least several hours to start going through this to at least give those people a chance to get a sense for what the committee's questions are. Um, and so perhaps they can be more proactive than the, the school board has chosen to be. Perhaps we won't lose as much time that way either. Um, okay. Uh, the, so the request is to have uh, everyone who can attend that normally attends uh, to please attend on Tuesday so that we can ensure that we have captured questions that can then get the research done and we can get some answers turned around earlier on in our cycle rather than wasting too much time. Um, any other comments on the school budget at this time? Mr. Mr. Giovanelli. I, I did notice that the overall increase was only 3.35%. So it, it's probably fairly reasonable what's in there at this point. Mr. Chairman? Hard to tell without the right backup. Yeah. Mr. Verville. Yeah, I, I don't have my laptop fired up, um, and I am not in the mental state to go through those numbers tonight. But one thing, if memory serves me, in fact, a 3.5% increase year on year would be uh, actually an extraordinary large increase from uh, one year to the next. If memory serves me, and again, I'm simply going off memory, year-on-year uh, -year increases have been more typical uh, of 2% or less. When, uh, when the budget is the size of the school, which is an extremely huge budget, 3% of that one is a lot, lot bigger chunk of money than the town being 3% higher. Um, and that's one thing we always have to keep in mind. Mr. Scott, did you have a question? No. Okay. I thought oh, I saw you raise your hand. Mr. Mr. Von Hassel. Just to add some comments to that, I, I would be surprised if many people in Deerfield received a 3.35% increase in their salary this year. That's always the case. Mr. Carbone, did you have something? Okay. Thought you, Mr. Lang Lloyd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, 
a couple of lines just to pay attention to in, uh, in, in looking where a significant portion of the increase has occurred. Um, teacher retirement uh, is up 106,330 uh, from last year. Uh, that is uh, due to a downshift uh, from the state. The um, rate went from 15.67 to 17.36. Um, and we have seen some increases in the special ed lines that we are um, required to fund. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll move to citizens' comments. Good evening, Mrs. Katie. Good evening. Uh, there's one thing that has bothered me for quite a while about the voting and those who abstain. When I took the White Mountain Parliamentarian Association workshops, abstention was meant only for those who had a conflict of interest or had not been present. So I see people abstaining for no reason. I'd just like to point out that is not proper parliamentary procedure. I realize you don't run strictly to parliamentary, but that is not something to be done. I am also a citizen who I don't know how much longer I have to live, but to have my tax dollars going into trusts that I may not be around to benefit from upsets me. I don't believe people that live in town that may move out should have to put into a trust money they will never see the use of. If we need roads built, bond them. One of the problems Deerfield has in getting grant money is the fact that we don't show debt, we show we have money. Debt shows that a town is poorer. So I, I urge people to stop and think. Trusts are set up and they are taking present residents' money who may not be here. The average for people now is five to seven years in a home and then they move. Now, that may not apply to any of you, but it applies to a lot of the people in town. So why should you be taking money and putting it in. If we need roads built, bond it. Epping bonded a number of years ago, and so people that came in were paying for the roads they were traveling. Thank you. I also, um, let me see. I also would like to see a packet for the citizens in the audience. It's very difficult to follow when you're giving line numbers and you're talking about stuff and they can't even see it. I see no reason why three or four can't be provided on this table so that we can also follow along. Now I realize I'm the only one here tonight, but there have been three to five people in the audience and they should be able to also see. We pay enough taxes to be able to have something to read while we're at a meeting so that we can make a proper and informed comment. Thank you. Thank you. I will say we have done that in the past. I don't know why we didn't do that this year, but uh, we, have, we, can, we can try to have extra copies when we have stuff, uh, at least a few. We've, we've done it in the past. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Burville. If I may, so uh, Ms. Katie brings up a good point. So uh, to Selectman uh, Robertson, um, whether the, whether the, if the select board would choose to move forward with uh, more aggressive road maintenance and rebuilding, uh, I certainly would not be opposed to see it in the form uh, of a bond. Um, I do like the idea of putting it into a warrant article. Um, and whichever vehicle the uh, the select board would deem is most expedient, I you know a bond a bond actually sounds like a pretty good idea, and I I, I have to admit I feel remiss that I didn't think of it. Thank you. So 
Any other citizens' comments? Seeing no other citizens. <laughs> Move to adjourn. <laughs> we, we've got a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Nope, that's up there. I thought there was going to be old business or new business. We already had that. Oh, okay. D but yeah, before we'll before we adjourn, we're on we're on discussion for adjournment, so you can make a comment. Uh, All right. Well, this is entirely uh, uh, just a kudos to the chairman, but the board of selectmen did vote on Monday evening to accept a copier that uh, Chairman Spillane uh, got for secured for the town of Deerfield from Capital Copier, I believe. Um, it's a commercial size copier. It comes with a maintenance contract or has ha been under maintenance contract and is apparently in excellent condition and the town plans on putting it to good use. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, now we've got our motion to adjourn on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting. I mean, the, there is a. Um, <laughs> I can't get this to uh, stop.